So yeah, that able to change on that moment. So I'm gonna be Now as you can see I've got the Ruby M10 dog. So anyway, let's get it sim. How are we you handsome lot? We've got a Peugeot. I th you know what? It could be a 206 as far as I'm concerned. It is a Peugeot 208. And this car has got a misfire on it, believe it or not. Now, when I'm standing here, it might not sound it to you, but I can hear like a like an electric tick every now and again. Now, to me, that is an injector feeling. What we're going to be doing is grabbing the scanner and have a little look, see what fault codes we've got. Now, I'm in the car, we've got the scanner and the diagnostic machine that I'm using is a Launch Euro Tab 3. Now, as you can see, I've already done a high-speed scan of the vehicle and we've got lots of fault codes throughout all modules of the vehicle. What we're going to do, we're going to create a report of this vehicle. Um, there we go. Save it. Always create a report before you carry out any work so you know what's what. All right, let's go back and we need to jump down now to ECM, Engine Control Module. Read the fault codes. Uh, injector two controls short circuit between two wires. It's probably going to be an injector, the Pisa injector, which has failed on that one. And the additive adding of the DPF FAP has exceeded the maximum threshold. We're not really worried about that. I think it's going to be all right. We just need resetting. Now, because this is a DV6 and the uh, injectors are right down the back there, because we don't want to disturb all of the plastics and stuff like that, just to check them. We're going to be checking them at the ECU. Now, I already have to carry that out, and all the injectors were reading 200 kilo ohms. Now, to replicate the fault, I've had to take it down the road and get it red hot. But as you can see, that engine is missing. So, what we're going to do now, switch that engine off, come back to the ECU, unplug it, and we're going to check them while they're hot. Now that the car is misfiring and the injector is not working as it should, we're going to be checking for resistance, which is 200 kilo ohms about, and we have got there on that one. Now I can't remember which pins I haven't had a look at the wiring diagrams, but you can always tell which wires are for the injectors because they are twisted and they're a heavy core wire. Right, let's move around to the next injector. And there we go. Now I've moved around to the next injector, which is the next two pins below it. Not even reading. Let's just check the other two. Now I've moved the airbox, all the other injectors tested okay. Now, cylinder two on this engine, where do you think it is? It's there, it's actually number three. Just put them back to front. If we just go around now and unplug it, it's not gonna make any difference to that car whatsoever. As if we do to the other one, it's gonna make a difference. Now with that disconnected, uh, you can go back and you can check the resistance between the plug of the ECU and the plug on the injector. If we go back around to the launch now, we press database. It's gonna tell you exactly how to do it. Uh, fault code, injector two, show diagnostics. If you wanted to go down your road, of getting your scope out, you can get your scope and check all your voltage traces and stuff. Now, if you've got a pin one, pin one on the injector, and pin, I can't remember what it is, on the ECU. It tells you, is it less than 0.5 ohms? Well, of course it is. Now I've carried out all the tests that I needed to do to confirm the fault. Now, what I'm gonna do is get on the buzz Rooney, get a price of the injector, quote the customer, hopefully they have it done, and we will be back shortly, fingers crossed. Well, good news and bad news. The good news is the customer's given us a go ahead. The bad news is I can't get one till tomorrow morning. But Seeing that this car is still drivable, I'm going to get it off the ramp, put it outside, and get another one on. But we'll see you tomorrow. Well, we are back into Friday morning. Now, I've got the car back on the ramp, as you can see. Now, I've just been on the phone to the part supplier, and the new injector is on its way. So we're going to get involved now and get this injector out. What we need to do, obviously, we need to unplug the injectors. Just unplug, well, these three, just so you've got a little bit of room to remove the spill pipes. Now these spill pipes, be extra careful with them, because if you're not, you're gonna end up snapping them and they're about 80 odd quid. Please be careful. Now we can get a 14 mil now, and we can undo that injector pipe. Now once I've got that pipe removed, what you need to do, well, a lot of what a lot of people do, they undo it by there and they just bend the pipe, but don't. Get yourself a long extension with a crow's foot and just undo it off that fuel rail, and that pipe now will just pull out of the way 
you don't need to take it off just twist it out of the way and then we can get that e-torx and get the injector clamp off once that bolt is removed out of the injector clamp what we need to do then now we all know that i like a a little tool now and again now this is by Serdoff as a two-piece twist inject the bar and what it does there's two of them depending on what injectors you've got and they just screw on to the injector pipe there and you can get hold of them and give them a wiggle how decent is that uh, injector now should just pull out beautiful <laughs> the clamp falling down the back there but we'll get that don't worry now the brand new injector has turned up but before we put it in give me a little light or a box of light to tell you what these are absolutely brilliant stupidly bright we're going to get our drill now with this uh, injector seat cleaner the link is in my link tree for it i'm going to clean down there i don't know if you can see and make it look that's better isn't it i'll make it look like brand new and that is going to be the difference between whether it chuffs or not but before we put it in now the amount of times i see this over the years is insane people put injectors in but they don't swap that little uh, i don't know what it's called that little white plastic just call it a guide guide yeah uh, they don't put that on and what happens is when you talk the injector up it pulls it to one side and it causes the injector to chuff but anyway we're going to swap that over once i've got everything ready to go back in this vehicle as you can see the injector what we've done we have just covered it in a little bit of liquid molly injector and glow plug grease just a little bit preventative if it ever has to come out again it's going to come out nice and free we're going to jump on technical data and get it talked up to specaroon once we put that injector in before we go tightening it up what we're going to do we're going to attach let me move that out of the way we're going to attach the fuel line so as we talk it up we know exactly what position it needs to be in because nothing wrong with nothing worse than talking it up and it be out you get me because it can move a little bit but make sure that them pipes are on before you talk it up once we're happy with everything and everything is now plugged back in uh, i'm not going to put the air box on just yet just make sure that your air filters in otherwise the car won't run the, the airflow meter should i say uh we're going to leave it off just so we're going to check for leaks and stuff going to get in the car now and do a little bit of button pressing we now need to program that new injector into the vehicles we're going to jump into ecm and then we're going to go to special functions replacement parts replacement of injector 2 uh, 40 diesel injector is not 680 on the end that is the old one and that is 680 we can carry on with the procedure in certain cases two codes separated by a dash may be displayed on the diagnostic tool yeah 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 right injector 2 what we need to do now is enter the new numbers which i've got on my phone off the new injector where's it gone not that one, not that one, which is that one there. We need to input that into the ECU. Now, once that's all been configured, click OK and it's telling us to start the engine. So, OK, beep off. Start the engine is probably going to run a little bit lumpy, but never mind. And it will settle itself out. Perfect. And just like that, that car now is all back up running together. We've got no fault codes whatsoever and no leak. All I've got to do now is put all that plastic back together and take it down the road for a little bit of a test drive. Well, here we have it. We're out in the car now and I've been out for about, oh, 10, 15 minutes. Temperature gauge is up to normal working temperature. And the car is driving and pulling like a train. Anyway, let's get back to the workshop. And there we have it, with a successful test drive, I am more than happy to give this customer their car back. Now, we've got no fault codes. I am more than happy. More than happy. That it's Friday as well. But anyway, hope you've all had a, a nice week in work and are going to enjoy a weekend off. But yeah. Anyway, let's get it sent.